In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a linear contrast analysis in SPSS. And the first data set I'm going to use is relevant to the alcohol and memory performance study, where there were three groups, low dose, medium dose, and high dose, and memory performance was measured on a continuous scale where higher scores imply better memory performance. So in this case, where we have three groups, low, medium, high, we might hypothesize based on theory in previous research that high dose alcohol will produce lower memory span scores. And so this is going to be the lowest group. This will be somewhere in the middle and the low dose will probably be the highest performing group. And because we have some kind of direction in mind about how the means are going to be patterned, we could test a linear contrast analysis. And in this case, we're expecting a downward trend in the means. So to test that statistically, go into one-way ANOVA and put memory in the dependent list and dosage in the factor list. And let's just make sure we got the descriptive statistics. Technically, this analysis assumes homogeneity of variance. And let's look at the contrast button. And here, we need to specify the nature of the contrast. And you might recall uh, in the video where I talked about contrast weightings, you can look at the table to find out what contrast weightings you should specify. And for a linear contrast with three groups, which is the case here, we've got low dose, medium dose, and high dose, three groups, we have this contrast weighting that we could test, which is negative one starting low, zero, and then plus one. This is in the opposite direction of what we're expecting. I'm expecting low dose to be higher and high dose to be lower. So the contrast I should use is actually flipped off for this one. It would be plus one, zero, negative one. And it's up to you to decide what direction this is going to be based on your hypothesis or your theory. So in this case, I'm going to specify plus one for the low dose group, zero for the medium group, and negative one for the high dose group, and it's negative one because I expect them to score lower. One is larger than negative one. Therefore, this is a linear contrast because there's no bend in the means here, and it's also summing to zero, so it's an appropriate contrast, and it's going from higher to lower. Click on OK. So here we get the results. And we can see the homogeneity of variance assumption has been satisfied, just barely. And we can see the trend in the means. It starts higher, 21.7. You know what? I also want a plot of the means because that's really important for a contrast analysis. So we can see the means here, 21.7, 19.9, 13.06. And you can see the pattern of means here going from higher to lower to lowest, and it's low dose, medium dose, high dose. So as you increase alcohol consumption, you reduce memory span performance. So was the hypothesis supported? Could we reject the null hypothesis of no linear trend in the mean? And the answer is yes. We got a T value of 5.239. We can also have does not assume equal variances, which is a nice feature in the SPSS utility, if we had violated the assumption of homogeneity variances, we could have still used does not assume equal variances. And I'm going to assume that sample size is irrelevant for this because I think it actually is robust to unequal sample sizes and unequal variances. Either way, we've rejected the null hypothesis, p less than 0 0.001. And so because the t value is positive in direction, it is considered consistent with the direction of the hypothesis. So that's something you need to keep in mind when you do these analyses is what direction is the t value? Because if I reversed it, let's say I actually tested a direction opposite, it actually will still be significant, but it would be a little bit misleading in the sense that it wouldn't be consistent with your pattern of mean. So imagine if I tested this. This is still a linear contrast going from lower to higher. And I'm going to get exactly the same t-value, but it's actually going to be negative in direction. So whether the t-value is positive or negative, you need to keep in mind. But ultimately, you should be looking at your chart. So if the pattern of means is consistent with the trend that you hypothesized, then you should be testing the coefficients consistent with that and then getting a positive t-value. 
again, this, the t value is negative, which is exactly the same t value. It's just negative in direction. So just be careful with that. Make sure the rejected null hypothesis is, in fact, consistent with what you were expecting. Now let me do one where I don't reject the null hypothesis. Let's look at catch a liar. You might remember this from previous examples in the textbook where we had four groups, federal agents, federal judges, police officers, and clinical psychologists. You could test some sort of linear effect here, but it wouldn't really make a lot of sense theoretically to do so. Like what is the moreness of any of these groups? So does one have more education than the other? Does one, what is it? I don't know. But let's just say we actually did test one. And it was a linear upward trend. So we can go compare means, one way ANOVA, and accuracy in there, group and factor box, and contrast. Well, what contrast should we put? Well, we could put for four groups in this case, negative three, negative uh, one, one, and three. Negative three, negative one, one and three. This is testing a linear increasing trend in the means. And let's see what we get. And in this case, the null hypothesis has also been rejected, but it's actually going downward, not upward, mostly. So we've started from lower to higher with this hypothesis, but it's actually going from high to low. There is a bend here, which suggests there might be a quadratic function, one bend in the means. But to be honest, I wouldn't report this sort of analysis because there's nothing inherently meaningful about this trend. What do we, federal agents, federal judges, police officers, and then clinical psychologists go up a bit? But even, even if we interpreted this linear bit here, maybe they get more training to detect liars. Who knows? I just thought I'd show you a second one based on the coefficients. The last thing I'm going to show you is that you don't actually have to specify the contrasts weightings if you are lazy. You can actually go into Analyze, Compare, Means, ANOVA, go into Contrasts, and instead of specifying your contrasts, you can just say, I want to test a polynomial. Let me get rid of this. And you want a linear effect or a quadratic or a cubic. And SPSS will generate the coefficients for you. So let's test that. And we should get exactly the same t value that we got before. It's actually doing it as an f test instead of a t test. But you're getting here, this is for the low, medium, and high dose alcohol on memory performance. And we can see that we're getting a linear term contrast f value of 27.449. And it's p less than 0.005. And if I square root that f value, it should give me the same t value that I got earlier when I specified the contrast myself. So 5.239, let's go to the very first analysis I did, and we get the 5.239. So when you, do, when you get SPSS to generate the coefficients for you, it actually does an f test instead of a t test. But f and t are comparable to each other in the sense that you can square root a f value to get a t value or square a t value to get an f value. The negative of doing it this way, where SPSS generates the coefficients for you, is that you do not actually get the coefficients specified to you. So you don't know for sure what SPSS is testing. And the other negative is that you don't get the homogeneity of variance not assumed option. And I could see that being quite valuable in cases where you do violate the assumption of homogeneity of variance and your sample sizes are unequal. When you specify the contrast yourself with the weightings inputted by you, you get it as a t-test with the variance assumed and variance not assumed options. So overall, I'd probably recommend that you learn how to do the contrast weightings yourself so that you can actually get that option.